Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there's only one elemental truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. And all sorts of things occur to help one that would never have otherwise occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have ever come your way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it now. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. This is Evolve CPG's Brands for a Better World podcast, featuring purpose-driven leaders who not only believe in better, but actively pursue it. That's better products, better brands, and better leadership for a better world. Thanks to you, our listeners, this podcast is now ranked in the top 10% of all podcasts globally. Let's not stop there, though. You can help us reach more people by taking a moment to leave us a rating or review, which is critical for podcast algorithms and by sharing your favorite episodes with your network. The more people we reach, the more good we can bring about in this world. If you work in the industry, you can also join our online community where we're going further, faster, together at community.evolvecpg.com. I'm your host, Gage Mitchell, founder and creative director of Modern Species, a sustainable brand design agency helping better brands grow and scale their impact. On this episode, we're speaking with Matt Damore and Linwood Paul, founders of Subtle Distinctions, about the fears and beliefs that hold us back and the three steps we can take to break free and start living our best lives. Well, thanks for having uh, us on, Gage. As always, it's a, it's a blast to be back on the podcast. Um, much appreciated. Um, so I'm Matt Damore. And I've got also my wonderful and amazing business partner, Linwood Paul, on. And we have a personal growth and professional development company called Subtle Distinctions, where we work with an uh, integrative approach, meaning that we're looking at the uh, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual aspects of the person um, to help them ultimately make the best decisions possible and create what they want in life. Um, We do that in the context of one-on-one coaching, or we call it tandem coaching because it's the both of us. And then we also do things like uh, working with teams. We do workshops. We do retreats, events, and a lot of other great stuff that involves uh, humans wanting to do more and be more. So that's a little bit about uh, us and what we do. Awesome. Thanks. Excited to chat more today. Kicking off 2023 with an amazing topic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it, this is the time of year where uh, typically we see a lot of people um, wanting to set New Year's resolutions, do things differently. And that includes, for the most part, uh, I would say the top three are going to be around people's health overall, eating better, exercising, things like that. We see a lot talking about relationships, and then we see a lot talking about finances. So um, some some common themes. And it's really interesting because Linwood and I are constantly, excuse me, um, we have the wonderful opportunity um, to engage with uh, lots of different people over the 40 plus years that we've been working either as entrepreneurs ourselves or now collectively. And so we pick up themes, we understand, we start to really identify things that are happening for a lot of people. Um, So what we're speaking in today and uh, about is something that I feel could be really powerful for a lot of people to hear that they might not have um, thought about that directly relates to themselves becoming their best self. Um, And specifically in this time of year where we're, we're focused on change, we're focused on growth. um, It could be a, a, a great thing for them to consider. So ultimately the concept is that um, if you were to ask the type and, you know, the common person, um, you know, do you want to be your best self? I, I would say that nine times out of 10, <laughs> hopefully 10 <laughs> times out of 10, that person would say, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if you ask them, so what do you think is the cause for you maybe not having what you want in life? What do you think is the, the one of the main reasons that um, you maybe not have the relationship or you're in the, the your, your um, financial status or your health or something like that? And um, they would probably give you some answers about the fact that, well, they 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 don't they haven't you know 
they're not that good at exercise. They don't really like it. They haven't been exercising for a while, or they're just not into nutrition, or they've got a sweet tooth, or they overspend, or you know, they just you know whatever. But um, I don't think many people would talk about how they're scared to actually have what they want. Interesting. And so what we want to dive into a little bit today is this hesitancy that we have found permeate into most people's um, subconscious. And this is really where uh, the driver for a lot of people's behaviors is in their subconscious, is this idea that if people are too successful – if people are to shine and really let their brilliance come out and and let them experience the things that they that they would want to somehow in themselves they're not giving themselves permission to do that because they feel like they're either going to be better than somebody right or superior and that's something that we see all the time as people kind of um dampening their brilliance because it, they're concerned about how it's going to come across um, they feel like maybe they're putting somebody down by being great. Um, ultimately, they've been trained by society that if we pop our heads up too much and show ourselves, it's actually physically unsafe, right? Um, another thing is that, you know, if we also demonstrate our capacity at some level, we might be asked to take on more responsibilities. Um, so this idea... I feel, and and like I said with Linda Wood and I, is that um, in order to really begin addressing these things that people want in the new year, um, a great place to start for me is always at the root. And I feel this concept and we feel this concept is uh, at the root of why a lot of people don't change. And ultimately, to kind of summarize what I've just said in, in a little bit of a nutshell, and that is... Um, that they're scared and they have fear and they have concern. And ultimately that fear and concern is around feeling like they're better than other people. Um, scared that if they, you know, they pop their head up too much, like I said, um, they're going to be asked to do more and ultimately it's unsafe. So Linwood, um, what else do you have to say on that? Um, well, <clears throat> I think if, 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 if I were a listener um, and hello listeners, um, if, I was a, if I was a listener, I would be wondering. I, I get that, you know. That's true. That that's true for me, Matt. What you just said, I get that. You know that that I uh, that that I've been um, indicted for being self-important, or um, I don't want. I want to make sure I don't want make make a vain move, or I don't want you to think that you're that I'm better than you. All of that stuff is true. I would be wondering as a listener. So why should I put my head up? Why should I go about being all I can be? Why should I go unchained, if you will? And and where it where it where it what it comes down to uh, uh, is it's on, on two levels. One of them has to do with the the ethereal, if you will, it has to do with with how things work that are unexplained. Like um, there's a quote from. Uh, um, uh, William uh, Murray, and, and, and it, a, a lot of us have heard it. It's until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there's only one elemental truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. And all sorts of things occur to help one that would never have otherwise occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have ever come your way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it now. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. And what that points to for me, and that's the quote, and what that points to for me is that as soon as you decide something, as soon as you say, I'm going to be more, as soon as you say, I'm going to let go of or question some of the things that you were just talking about, Matt, things just start to happen that we didn't even think about, that, that, that aren't our doing, that aren't because of anything we've done besides making that decision. Um, I had a friend the other day who, to show how this all works, we were having a conversation about electric cars. 
you know, and they were talking about the batteries, you know, when they, when the batteries crap out, you know, it's just as bad for the environment as, as gasoline and blah, 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 blah. And then <clears throat> he, he called me up the next day and he said, do you know how many electric cars I saw yesterday? They must be the thing to buy. And the truth <laughs> isn't, the truth isn't that hundreds or thousands of electric cars were purchased the day of our decision. The truth is that we talked about it, that set up the mind to see it and to know it and to pay attention to it, and there they were. And so if we do that for ourselves, there we can be, we'll have a better uh, 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 alignment with all that there is, with the ether, if you will, uh, with providence in that quote, then have that go uh, in our favor. And then secondly, uh, the why do it has to do with other people, has to do with what we create in the world. And I want to go to another quote on that, which um, is of questionable origin. Some people say it's um, uh, uh, in the book by Marianne Williamson. Other people attribute it to Nelson Mandela. Um, but the, the quote is this, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, or fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We're all meant to shine. We were born to make manifest what is inside of us. It's not just in some of us, it's within everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And so there's two frames there. There's the ethereal frame. There's the things that we cannot explain being set in motion because we have decided to be unchained. And then there's what that impact has on other people, which is what so many of us are looking to have an impact on. Wow. For a second, I was going to say, wow, you pulled both those quotes out of your head, but I'm... <laughs> I'm hoping slash assuming you were reading something there because those that are was some great quotes. Because, because part, of, part of Matt and I's unchainedness as a partnership in Subtle Distinctions is that we are, we, we spend, um, and it used to be an inordinate amount of time to, uh, planning and designing what we were going to present. And, and more and more as we go on, we... And, and part of why we enjoy these conversations with you, Gage, and your community so much is because we're musing. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're talking about things that we have found to be so true that they really don't require research because the research has been our experience of each other and life and our business and our, and our clients and people in general. Um, I just wanted to come to today with some things that people could find, those two quotes that they could find and you know, do a post-it note or 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 take a line from uh, as they're uh, uh, complete with this podcast. Nice, love it. <laughs> One of the things that came to mind as you both were talking is you hear this described sometimes as people being afraid of success, and that on on the surface sounds ridiculous because I imagine if you asked mm -hmm. almost anyone if they're afraid of success, they would say, "What? Well, absolutely not." I'm I'm striving for success. I want success. I, I have success or whatever. But as you both describe it in each of your unique ways, I think it kind of sheds more light on that. It's not necessarily afraid of the idea of being success. It's afraid of all the other stuff that might come with that success of, like you're saying, standing out from the crowd or being attacked or, or getting bad press or making other people feel bad or, or maybe it's you know reaching a height uh, like imposter syndrome to some degree, like you have this level of success and you feel like constantly like you're going to fail in any moment and people are going to find out that you're a fraud or, you know, there's so many things surrounding success that people are afraid of. It's not the success itself. It's everything that comes with it. Just like a celebrity, uh, a, a young actor maybe wants to become famous and then as soon as they've got paparazzi taking a picture every time they're 
eating a burger with ketchup all over their face or whatever, they're, they're all of a sudden wishing they weren't famous, you know? So I think there's stuff that comes with achieving things that we want that we, that aren't as ideal, but we can't let those things hold us back from un, unchaining ourselves and becoming who we are. Right. Absolutely. What's the first thing that people hear? What's the first thing that people say when somebody talks about winning the lottery gauge? That everyone's going to be asking them for money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't even know who my friends are anymore. And then the second one they talk about is all the taxes. <laughs> it's, oh, the yeah. same, it's, the, it's the same mechanism in play. Yep, absolutely. So let yourself win the lottery. Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> let yourself win the lottery. Play. Well, you know, what we're talking about today, Gage, is play. Buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Buy a ticket to the game. You know, you're you're here. Be all you can be. Go unchained. That's buying a ticket. That's anteing up in the game in a way that Providence will kick in some things that you never thought about. And other people will, um, if enough of us were to do that, that would be the new way of being. Because yeah. a lot of this came from habit, habit and patterns, right? And a lot of people playing small, playing small, playing small. That's kind of the, the way to be, the way to go, to be, to, to, to be in the in crowd. You don't want to be on the out crowd because you're too much. Yeah. And, and so, Gage, for, for everyone who's uh, tuning in, I guess I want to give a little bit of like some how-tos um, for some of, some, some of this stuff um, and, and retrace the steps back a little bit, if that's okay. And that is um, a cool place to start is always to understand uh, what your belief system is. Some people have a stigma around this word, but I like it because people know what it means. But what's your story? What's your narrative? What what are you telling yourself around the concept of success? And for for me, I would say to a person who's wanting to understand why they have what they have is great. So what what is and has um created how you think about certain things i.e success in this case and sit down and contemplate and like well you know what it's really interesting because when i was seven i remember that um you know i when i was really excited about getting uh, a ribbon at the whatever award something happened and it just like didn't feel good because i was you know shut down by you know so and so oh wow great imprint that's called a seed planted that is now growing for the rest of your life. So if you can start to identify those things, it's like, oh, awesome. Okay, I get to see why I am or what has influenced me into getting here. And the next thing is, awesome. Now, can I start to recognize it real time? Can I start to point at it real time and say, oh, look at what I just did there. That was really interesting. Um, you know, okay, I got this reflection okay, this is, this is, this is interesting stuff now. So that's step two. Step three is now, what do I want to do with it? What new seed do I want to replace? What new story do I want to write? What new behaviors do I want to do be? And how can I create repetition and instill a new pattern? And still you have to literally, and I keep, I love this analogy. I use it all the time, but you have to install new software. Right. So Apple, if you're an Apple user, you get a new software update, however many, you know, however uh, frequently that comes up and you literally install the new system. And so why aren't we doing that for ourselves? We're constantly changing way faster than the iPhone. And how many times are we literally downloading new software? <laughs> Barely ever, if any, you know, if ever for, for many people. So that would be a, a process that could lead people to having something to do around this. Because a lot of times there's like, yeah, just go do that. They're like, um, do what? Like, how do I, how do I start just showing up and, and doing these things? Um, so that could be something that, that could begin having, um, creating a connection to the concept and also seeing what they can do differently going forward to create what they want. Yeah, I'm a big framework nerd, as as you both know. Um, so I like I like this kind of three step process. I wonder if some people might be asking though, okay, well, how do I understand my belief system? Like, how do I dig into that narrative? Do you have mm -hmm. like five questions or a series of questions or something yeah. like that you like to ask people to pull that out of them? Yes. Um, well, I shouldn't say I, I don't have it off the hand, but here's what here's my response to your answer. 
One is have them uh, connect to either three or five people who they feel love them and care for them deeply and know them the most and ask them what they think their story is on that topic. So for me, I could go to Linwood and I could say, hey, Linwood, tell me my story around success based on what you see. Reflect back to me what you think it is, because I've probably given that to him through my actions and through my words and through my behaviors and through what I pay attention to. So if he's paying attention because he's close to me and loves me, he can reflect that back to me. And I love that concept of outsourcing your your feedback because Again, it has to be in my mind people who really care for you because that has to that that's that you know they need to have the right motive and that love you and that also know you the best. Um, so I would say that would be a uh, a good place to start. You can also break it down and just you know write down any associations, right? So for example, you know some people think money doesn't grow on trees, right? You always hear certain things like that. What what sound bites are you telling yourself? Um, you could go back and look at, uh, things that you've paid attention to in terms of, you know, what your parents have said to you around things. Um, if you were to give advice around this specific topic on how to, what advice would you give? And that typically would show you to yourself what you think about that and how you go about doing that. So almost just reverse engineering a lot of it. There's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of folks who give way better advice than they take. <laughs> so it's not that it's it's not that it's not in there. It's just not going on with me. You know, I want you to be big. I want you to be unchained. Oh my goodness, yes. But me, I'm gonna do a little something less than that because it's, and the word is because it's safer. Hmm. Question, question. Uh, 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 another answer to your question, as it occurs to me, Gage, is to. Um, is to ask yourself what safety are you um, uh, continuing by what it is that you're doing and how it is that you're playing. It's a safety game. Um, it is a, 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 something that I say a lot um, is that our, our nervous systems are uh, always detecting and seldom aware. And, and what the job of our nervous system is, of course, is to keep us safe. And so we're detecting, is this safe? Is this risky? Is this safe? Is this risky? What's going to happen if I do this? What's going to happen if I don't do that? And we're, we're just not paying attention. So part of it is to pay, as, as, as odd as this sounds, and we've said this over the years, pay attention to what you're paying attention to. There's a lot of truth and there's a lot of information in just what you're paying attention to. And the other example, it was the electric cars. Um, as soon as you put something in, that's what you're going to see. That's just how the mechanism works. So pay attention to what you're putting the mechanism to work to see and ahas will come from it. The other answer that I have to your question, Gage, is to do what it was that we did for this podcast, which is to find out, uh, to, to discover some notable quotables. Because there are some things on two levels. The one level is, we have in what what Matt just we called imprints and seeds. Those imprints and seeds are quotes, and if we can think about them, you know, like like Matt said, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, uh, uh, no good deed went unpunished. Um, you know, there's all kinds of these bits and pieces that are floating around that we go, aha, yeah, I believe that, and we keep it. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty sure it was uh, uh, Brad Blanton in his book uh, Radical Honesty. He said, it's really interesting that people will ask you the question, where did you grow up? As if it only happened once. <laughs> I think that's incredible. You know? And as Matt said earlier, which I absolutely love and I've never heard him say before, we're changing faster than the Apple is changing. And they've got like what now, an Apple 15? So we've got a lot of catching up to do in terms of versions of ourselves to bring to the world if we're going to just keep up with the devices that we're holding in our hand and which we would not keep in our hand much longer than the new version comes out. Yeah, I love this idea of thinking about the different versions of ourselves. And I've sometimes used that in like the version of your life. Like maybe you were on a version three of your career path or maybe you're on 
version five of places you've lived or something like that, but to think more uh, about yourself as a human and where you are in your evolution, um, considering that not just a couple milestones that change you, but every little decision you make, every new person you meet is inputting something and that's creating a new bit, bit of software that you can use to move forward. And that's fun. Absolutely. And I, I, to think of that way, I'm going to have to just get over my <laughs> fear of installing new software on my actual computer because <laughs> every time I do that, it breaks three other applications I have on the computer and then my peripherals don't work or, you know, whatever is going on. But with humans, we don't have to worry about that because we don't, we, we don't have USBs plugged into ourselves yet. Yeah. Well, we might, and, and we might, we might have to worry <laughs> about, we might have to worry about old news or old ways of being not working anymore or old programs. Um, yeah. That, new that, system that kind of, kind of putting a hitch in the giddy up to, until we, we figure it out. There's no doubt that, 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 that may happen gauge. And the good news is that when it comes to installing a new operating system in a computer, that operating system has been designed and created and been brought to your attention and maybe even automatically updated um, by other people with their expertise on the matter. Today, we're talking about your expertise on the matter and an operating system that you determine, that you decide, and that makes all the difference in the world because um, much like that book that Matt and I were, have been talking about for years and years, you know, what other people think about me is none of my business. Suppose it was that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I do because I, because it feels right for me. Um, even, even, <laughs> this is cool. Even um, another notable quotable, even Dr. Seuss has been talking about what we're talking about today. When uh, one, a Dr. Seuss, Seuss quote is, um, uh, uh, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Nice. Even I haven't like, looked for too many Dr. Dr. Seuss quotes, but now I want to look that. more up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so in, you might have a different direction you want to go for the next step here, but continuing on in our uh, framework journey. So I think that's those are some great notes on step one, understanding your belief system or your story, your narrative yep. around this idea of success. But step two, start to recognize um, this story in real time. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Once you bring it to mind, you're going to automatically see it more regularly, just kind of like the pop-out effect that Linwood was talking about before. Once you think about electric cars, you're going to see them everywhere. So once you think about your habits, you'll start recognizing them more. Uh, but step three, kind of what we were just talking about of installing your new software. So I like this analogy of installing the software, but there's plenty of people out there who have no idea how to install software on their computer and probably have no idea how to install new software in their brain. So do you have any tips on how they can go about rewiring themselves? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've got a, I've got a, a bunch, but we'll start with a few. One is going back to the outsourcing thing. And this is what I love because this is very practical stuff. Um, so the first step is if you create a success buddy and a success buddy can be somebody who um, you can let them know what you're trying to achieve and the specific topic that you're working on. Hey, Linwood. So here's what I'm trying to do. I'm actually trying to install a new program around my concept of abundance. Um, and if you ever hear me speak into or infer or um, do anything that would not necessarily be into that direction, would you be willing to reflect back to me that this is what you see me doing so I can catch it and then we can work through it together so I can understand how to replace it with different words, with different thoughts and with different actions. That's a really, really, really good one. It also creates an accountability buddy in that sense. Um, the other thing, which I'm-, I'm before, you go, before you go to the next one. Okay. And, and so, you know, a lot of folks have used that uh, phrase accountability partner. And usually that's kind of punitive, right? They hold your feet to the fire and they call you out when so-and-so and such and such. When really what, 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 what we like to do when we're kind of wordsmithing or playing with words is use accountability as two words, accountability, the ability to account for something. 
So what this partner really is there for you to do, Gage, is to assist you to, to assist you in being able to account for what you talk about and what you're paying attention to and what you bring out. So it's not a punishing partner or a, a somebody who's going to, you know, going to make sure that you get stuff done. It's somebody to help you build the muscle of being able to account for what you're up to. Because all too often when people start talking about like, here's another one of those notable quotables, the forest from the trees. All too often we are the forest and the trees in that sense that we don't even see and notice what it is that we're seeing and noticing. So that's what we mean by an accountability partner. Okay. So more like a spotter at the gym than like you're saying, somebody who's going to reprimand you and make you put a dollar in the cup every time you say a curse word or something. Yeah. It's not exactly. punishment. It's, yeah. It's support. Yeah. 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 Great. Great catch. On the who wants to, who wants to even include, who wants to create somebody like that? In my, and, and I don't want to create anybody like that in my life. Slap I'm my wrist every I'm, time I, I'm, I'm good at it enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. All by myself. Yeah. I don't need anybody punishing me when I screw up again. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, the other one that I think is really, really big, and I'll just kind of dive into a few nuts and bolts on this is to, is through meditation and specifically, I'll tell you kind of what type of meditation, but, um, so, you know, our, 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 we've got our, our conscious mind gauge, we've got our, uh, subconscious mind and we've got our unconscious and the, um, conscious brain is the only brain that really has choice. And the other two are really good rule followers. And, but the, the language that the subconscious and the unconscious brain use is a different language than the conscious brain uses. We use logic, we use words, there's frameworks. The, un, the subconscious really is the, the main one that I'm going to focus on here because that's where all this patterning lives. And that's, that's really where the, the um, kind of the hard drive, if we're going to keep going back to this analogy, this is where all of our data is stored. Um, and so how there's specific meditations um, that if people can look up basically that allow them to get into their subconscious and the subconscious loves adventure, the subconscious loves sounds and elaborateness, it loves colors, it loves feelings, all of that stuff. So if you want to go into um, these meditations, um, literally take yourself to the place of becoming and, and continuation because um, a lot of times also in uh, personal growth, it's you are you're affirming something as if it's happening. But then the, the subconscious break goes, oh, great. Well, then it's done. Then I don't need to continue this because we've already checked this one off the list. So you have to train the subconscious mind into repetition of becoming. I'm becoming healthier. I'm becoming more successful. So that means it's got a job every day that says, well, I need to be more than, that tomorrow than I was today. So I got to keep becoming and becoming. So the, the, the direct answer would be through meditation where you can get into these um, subconscious states by creating these, um, you know, this, this voyage, this adventure, this imagery in your mind that has to do with where you want to go. Um, and then put in, literally put in the program that you're looking to achieve in that meditation on a continual basis by it evolving more and more and more and more and more. Um, and so that's a really, really, I mean, that's quite frankly, I think, one of the most effective ways um, to do that, because if we're, if we're not really addressing the subconscious, then we're kind of like just taking the weed whacker over the weeds. We're never going in and pulling out the root. Um, so, but then on the surface level, we've got the, we've got our, our, our um, success buddies that are supporting us and in inserting different languaging and, and things of that nature. Um, and then just another blanket kind of catch all is, to begin to take care of yourself more, you know, make sure that you're getting the proper rest, make sure that you're eating high quality organic food, make sure you're drinking a lot of purified water, make sure you're getting sunlight every day, making sure that you're doing this. Why? Because these are constantly influencing and in, in creating who we are on a biochemical level. And without that being in balance, we can't rewire our brain. It's like, it's, you know, 
it's like we're going to a temple to meditate, but the temple's infested with rats and it's dusty and stuff like that. We have to keep our temple 100% clean if we think we're going to create things that are going to come from here because we, 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 it's just you have to start with the temple. Um, and I'm saying temple in a way that I'm referring to like a, a sacred vessel of yourself. Um, so lifestyle factors and a lot of people won't go and be like, wait a minute, it's that basic. I need to, you know, get proper rest. I need to drink really good water, eat organic food, get sunlight, walk my body, eliminate, you know, try to manage stress in order for me to rewire my brain to get what I want. And, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So I hope those are some practical ways. Yeah, it was a good note at the end there. I've got Thanks. another one, uh, Gage, um, from another direction. Um, um, it's called evidence, to create evidence. And to create evidence, when you talk about accountability, when you talk about any ability, um, response ability, when you talk about any kind of ability, you're talking about it taking place over time. It's like practice. So the practice of being unchained can include Um, Matt likes to use the phrase, and I think it's so cool, minimum viable effort. What is the smallest thing that you can do right now in order to create the biggest change? So one of the things you may want to do is to ask yourself the question, what would the really cool me do? If I was unchained, what would I be doing? And it might be as simple as call my mom because I haven't um, talked to her in too long. Um, It might be make a difficult call and find out that you'll live after the call is over. It might just be according to the the commander of the Navy SEALs when he said, make your bed. He made it as simple as make your bed. Um, and that, that's why all soldiers have to make their bed in the morning. It begins your day in a way that a cool person, that somebody unchained, somebody that was, if, if this were how, if this would come about for me as I answer that question, how they start their day and they come back to the bed at night and it's made and they go, huh, I did that. And it just starts to create evidence that I am that person, that that person is inside of me to, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate itself on a daily and then on a regular and then on the automatic systems been changed over level. Um, remember, remember pretty woman? Um, that might be going back uh, too far. It was a movie with Julia Roberts and uh, 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 yes. what they call back in the day. Um, <clears throat> and his, the thing that he did, the thing that he did in that movie that was so astounding to us viewers was he took his shoes off and took a walk in the grass across the street. And his business partner saw him do it. And was like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing, man? You, know, we don't, we don't, you don't walk in the grass without your shoes on. It was such a minimum effort and yet so profoundly uh, apart from and different and unusual for that man to be doing that what that what that was saying to us as viewers of the movie was this man is moving, he's changing, he's unchaining himself from where he used to be just by taking his shoes off and walking across the street. So to Matt's point, it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be small things that add up over time that equal you knowing you are being more of you. What I love about that too is that it's kind of like the root. The antidote to imposter syndrome to some degree, and it's like the reverse of fake it till you make it. Because what you're doing with that practice is you are being the thing that you want to be, even if it's in small ways. You're giving yourself proof Mm -hmm. that you are that unchained you. So that, therefore, like if you're having imposter syndrome of I'm not like good enough, I'm faking it, or like I'm not there yet, but I want to be that person, just find some small ways where you are that person <laughs> and it adds evidence to it so you don't feel yeah. like you have imposter syndrome anymore. That's, That's brilliant. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. And because what's an imposter last... overall except somebody who's really not done it? Who's right. you know, that's if if it's something that you do, it's not it's not an imposter. It's just exactly you, it's just you being you. And sorry yeah. for cutting and off. And last thing, that's right. No worries. Last thing I got to say on this um, is um, someone that Linwood and I worked with uh, a year and a half ago 
shared a really cool analogy that I think could be powerful to, for everyone to hear. And that's, um, you know, pull the target back. And I don't know if I, we've shared this with you, but um, a lot of times when we start to set goals and just to tie this whole thing up in a bow and, and um, we really, we are taught there's somewhere along the lines, like this, this whole fail fast and pivot and all this type of stuff and big, hairy, audacious goals. I think it's kind of messing people up to be honest with you, because it's training us to um, not believe in our goals. It's training us to like make commitments that we probably know we're not going to follow through on. And so psychologically we're training ourselves that what we say we're probably not going to do. And so with all of this, pull the target back. And the analogy that the, the gentleman that we were working with was imagine if you're shooting a gun for the first time and you've never shot a gun before, pull the target so it's like six inches off the tip of your gun and shoot 40 rounds through the dead center and then move it back a foot and then another foot and then another foot. Don't start with the target back 40 feet and you've never shot a handgun before. Good luck hitting the middle, right? So with this, that's the minimum viable effort. Bring that target so close that's not in a way that's enabling you and giving getting you a get out of jail free and not really having you really have to do any work for the goal. No, it's actually the opposite. It's training you to master step one before you go to step two, to step three, to step four, because then the brain says, wow, every single step I take, I'm hitting. Every single shot I take, I'm putting it through the bullseye. And you go and build. And what does that also do? It turns it into the long game. It turns it into a sustainable behavior that will then turn into something that is ingrained in you forever. But if we start with the target back, then we miss a couple of shots. It's like, ah, well... I didn't want to do that anyway, or that didn't really follow through. And so it forces us to, to really want it because it has to happen over time. And, you know, yeah, we can, we can flip our mind and we can change, but real change, the stuff that we're talking about here, this is repetition. This is over time. This is the long game. And we all want stuff quick these days. It's like everything is fast. And so this stuff, although can we can start immediately, if we really want to see, because behavioral change is not easy if you if you haven't noticed. You know, people aren't just no. deciding things and then ultimately being a master at it. it. Takes them forever sometimes. So that's my that's kind of like my final little share here today is is be okay with making smaller goals because we're we're not told that anymore. We're told the opposite. And this isn't to say don't dream way past the stars. It's saying you're going to get there, but just take smaller steps. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's a James, in James, a James Clear quote, but maybe it was in Atomic Habits or something like that. But he talks about the idea of just getting 1% better each day, mm -hmm. which makes a realistic goal, right? But what people are thinking like, oh, but I'm undershooting or I'm underselling myself or I can do more. But 1% better a day is 100% better in a matter of months and is 37 mm -hmm. times better, 37 times better, more growth or whatever mm -hmm. over the course of a year, right? So mm -hmm. if you started with that goal of this year I'm going to get grow 10x and you're just aiming at that 10x and you constantly fail and you feel defeated and it feels too big mm -hmm. and you procrastinate, mm -hmm. then maybe you'll end up 0% better. But if you aim at 1% mm -hmm. better and you stick uh -huh. to that every single day, mm -hmm. you'll be 3,700% better <laughs> by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Like that's huge, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's a great point that people don't have to aim too far to grow big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one one last little thing. I know I said I was done, but I got one <laughs> more thing. We so this is, this, is live, this, is, this is live Maddie D research coming at it to everybody. And so I came up with this concept maybe like in November. And, and if it's out there, forgive me if it's, if it's not original, but it felt original to me. So um, I basically was like, I'm not a goal guy actually, which is quite interesting. But I was like, you know what? This year I want to do something differently. Um, and so I came up with the idea that I'm going to make 12 sprint goals for the year. 12 individual sprint goals that I'm going to commit to for 30 days. And so each month has one goal. And that goal can be anything from, um, for example, I'm going to literally just do this one thing that's been on my personal to-do list at the house. Like I need to paint my bedroom because I've literally had this bucket of paint in my house for, you know, 
a year and I haven't done it. So my goal for January is just to paint my bedroom. That's it. Nothing else required. And I can't do anymore. So now I've created and I've brought in the, the constraint of limitation. Then boom. All right. So now I'm looking forward to what is it? And I mapped out 12 months and not, I didn't, I did everything from communication goals to um, relationship goals, to community goals, to, to um, self-care goals, to financial goals. And um, I mean, I have a listening goal for the month of July to be able to listen more than I speak and then journal on what my experience is based on listening more than I'm talking. And so I basically hit all these cool little different things. I've got a nature goal in, in, uh, in August um, to really connect in with nature more and what that looks like. So a concept for everybody could be, and I would love to hear everyone's experience if they decide to uh, try mm. this, but break it down into chunks too. So that's me pulling the target back. It's actually in, and then, and then throwing the target away after a month. Right. Um, and, uh, just playing around with how, you know, you like, you can be successful because 12 month goals. Yeah. I'm going to do this for 2023. That's, that's like a long ways out. That sounds like a Tim, Tim Ferriss book. And I feel like, (laughs) I don't know if you're (laughs) documenting that journey and I don't want to add extra pressure to this because I know the whole point is to keep it small, but, (laughs) but that sounds like a book. That sounds like something Tim Ferriss would write, but maybe it's a Maddie D book of here's, I, I did one thing a month and here's what it turned into in a year or uh-huh. you know, whatever, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's cool. Well, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like the terminology sprint goal because it's short, it's sweet, it's hot, it's over. It's short, it's sweet, it's hot, it's over. And the compounding interest of the, of the, of the different components of it is what makes it big, hairy, and audacious if it were to be brought up all at one time. Sprint goals. Never thought about that, uh, Matt. That was that was beautiful for me. I, I and I'd like to I'd like to post up on a sprint goal that I have for this month because of that. And that would be I was reading some um, and this was really unusual for me. I was reading some Mark Twain yesterday um, and <clears throat> and and came away with a quote from him that is going to set up my sprint goal. My sprint goal this month is to uh, give myself more self approval because Mark Twain said, um, I was reading yesterday, a man can't be comfortable without his own approval. So that's my sprint goal for the month. Matt is to, is to, is to give myself more approval is to do things just because I want to. And because I, um, uh, think they would be cool. That's it. No other reason. Wow, that would be based on what I've been trained to by my family of origin. That would be huge because everything that I was ever taught was about um, uh, being what my grandpa called conferred upon. You know, when you look at all of our degrees from colleges, it all says, you know, the regents of the state of New York has conferred upon, you know, and therefore I have the right to say that I'm this or that I'm that. I'm going to confer upon myself. Thank you, Matt. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And we got so many great quotes in this episode. I'm excited to see them all <laughs> in the show notes here. And I just want to call back again to a note that you made, uh, Matt, about taking care of your physical self with food, water, sleep and uh-huh. stuff too, because I think... I wasn't thinking that way when we were talking about rewiring yourself. Obviously that could be an individual person, an individual goal for someone is to get healthier. But even if your goal is to learn more about a subject or, you know, listen more or whatever, that physical side is super important because if you are hungry and you haven't slept and you're thirsty and whatever, how how good are you going to be at listening at that moment? How patient are you going to be with other people? Mm-hmm. How well is your brain going to work if you're trying to learn a new subject? It's not, right? There's even been studies that mm-hmm. of, of uh, court systems. And if your, if your session or your verdict or whatever is coming out before lunch when the judge is hungry, there's a much higher likelihood that you're going to get some bad outcome from it. But if wow. you're sentencing is coming after the judge just ate they're more lenient like there's been studies on this kind of stuff that that prove that same thing with the medical system Um, there's 
a, a period after all these medical students get out and they're doing these, um, I'm spacing on the word right now, but they do these sessions where they go the in residencies, in residencies uh-huh. and they try out different roles and yeah. stuff and follow doctors around. But there's a huge spike in um, deaths and mistakes and other things that happen in hospitals <laughs> around that time that all these residents get released. And it's partly because they're all out there exhausted, tired, on their own for the first time. The medical industry is horrible about taking care of themselves. They're super long shifts and they don't give you time to go to the bathroom or eat food or anything like that. So there's like this big spike in like poorer outcomes for patients during that time. And all these things add up to, or even the Exxon Valdez, they blame it on the captain or whoever was driving the ship was was drunk. But um, in this book I read, uh, The Promise of Sleep, he actually breaks down that actually when they did deeper research is because the guy hadn't slept in like three days. Sure, he had a little bit of liquor in him, but it was any any ounce of alcohol you drink is compounded by how much sleep you haven't gotten, right? So like if he was fully slept, that little bit of alcohol wouldn't have affected him. So it goes back in so many different ways to like, if you're not taking care of yourself or the people around you aren't taking care of themselves physically, you can't be there emotionally. You can't be there mentally, et cetera, for other people or for yourself. So I just wanted to call back to the importance of that too. To this, to this point about installing an operating system, my computer will not let me begin an update unless I'm plugged in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I don't have it, if I don't the have fuel. the juice, if I don't yeah. have the juice, the fuel, the power, it's not yeah. even going to let me start to. Do and it an can't be in a room that's like be? 140 degrees, or else it'll start melting. You know, whatever. So yeah, totally, yeah. exact, exactly, good analogy. So yeah, that's that's great. I love this framework here of the the three steps, and I think we really kind of dove, dove deep in all of them. With that said, is there anything else either of you want to kind of recap or end with to inspire people to live more unchained? Wow, um, that's a big invitation, Gage. Um, I would say just the the freedom and the joy and the peace that can be achieved through allowing yourself to be fully you um, and to honor and to really, really recognize that in a way that has nothing to do with your ego at all, but really just a deep reverence and respect for yourself, I think can be one of the the coolest experiences that uh, you can continue to practice and deepen into and, and refine for yourself. Um, because it's really, I, I think for me at the core, one, one of the fundamental things that we're asked to do as humans is to show up and be fully who we are. That's why we're having this experience, right? It's like, we're not here to try to be somebody else. They're already taken. You came here, you know, as you, and I came here as me. So why don't we just do ourselves in that way? Um, because everyone else has got their own program and we've got ours to do. Right. And so um, I think uh, the the feeling um, that you can experience is absolutely um, just uh, drowns what the perceived fears are of doing it. And when you can just bust through and you can go for it and you can just sit in the uncomfortability of whatever it is that's keeping you from what you have, I think there's so much value in that. And then ultimately, um, it will get easier and easier over time as you can have a different relationship with all of it and you can really work with it. So um, those are my closing words. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this, Gage, <laughs> since I've been on the quote kick today. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> oh, I'm, man. I'm, I'm going to quote. Let's see. Oh, man. I like how it's he just either, has a database in his I, head. I got it. I'm going <laughs> to quote Mr. T. And that knows this thing. I, I love it. I'm going to quote Mr. T from another one from back in the day when he said, be somebody or be somebody's fool. <laughs> Is that from A-Team? <laughs> yeah, that's Mr. T from the A-Team. Be somebody or be somebody's fool. We are, current, we are all the time being worked. 
We're being all the time being worked to buy this, buy that, do this, don't do that. Don't be all you can be. Stay, stay calm, stay, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're all the time being worked. We're all the time somebody's fool unless we are somebody, according to us. I like it. I <laughs> don't, I think I made this one up, but maybe I borrowed it from someone else. I'm not sure, but it reminds me of one that I like to say, which is if you, do, if you don't choose your path, someone else will choose it for you. And it's the same kind of yeah. thing. Like if, if you don't decide what you want to do for a living, your parents are going to influence that or your, you know, opportunities that show up will influence that. If you don't decide where you want to live, somebody else is going to decide that, so on and so forth. But it comes down to exactly that. Be somebody or be somebody's fool, basically. I want to, I want to explain just a little bit my setting. It may make the broadcast. It may not. I am sitting <laughs> in an RV doing this uh, podcast. These are my bench seats in my RV. And I was telling somebody that I'm on a I'm on a road trip. I'm heading across the country, slow motion over the next six months to join Matt where he lives so that we can live in the same city and see each other every day. And she said to me, how do you do that? I'd love, she said, I'd love to do that. How do you do that? And I said, well, you know, I've been working with Matt in the field of human development for 30 some odd years. And the interesting thing about answers to questions like that is they're really simple, although not easy. And the answer to my answer to your question, you may like or not like, but it is this. Choose to. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Choose to and watch what happens. Yeah. So choose it. to choose to. I'm, I'm inviting your your listeners, our listeners to just choose what it is that they want to have and choose what it is and choose who it is they want to be and be all of it that they can. Yeah. Another one that I like to say is done starts with do. So just do and eventually it'll get done. Um, yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll, I guess I wasn't planning on throwing one in here, but in the, uh, inspired by all your old movie references, I was thinking of city slickers and how the old kind of cowboy, I forget the names of the characters, but the old cowboy kind of tells him there's just like the secret to life is just one thing. And then he dies and then he's, and then Billy Crystal's, uh, character is like obsessed over what is this one thing? What is this one thing? And he dies. And I can't remember what if they discover the one thing or not. It's been so long since I watched the movie. But I was just thinking, if if the meaning of life is one thing, what is that one thing? And maybe that one thing is to just be you. Maybe that's it. Maybe that is the entire point of our time on this planet, is to be you. It's easier said than done, but maybe that is the journey. Learn to be you and then lean into you and do as much you as you possibly can do because without you being as much you as boldly you as you possibly can be you're depriving the world of something special and unique that there is only one of love it i'll i'll i'll, I'll throw down on that gauge <laughs> yep you're depriving right. the world of something unique and that is you well, maybe that's a good place to wrap up then. But yeah, thank you both for kind of exploring what 2023 could look like for people if they just unchain themselves. This was a great topic. And as I mentioned, as a framework geek, I love that we gave a nice how-to uh, so that the listeners can hopefully put some of this into practice. And I'm excited to see what all of our listeners in our community um, look like at the end of this year after they are 37 times better. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to that 1% better each day kind of quote. So this is great stuff. So thank you both for coming on the show and doing what you do. You're welcome, Gage. Thanks Guys, for Gage. having me. Yeah, thanks, Cheers. Gage. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about Matt, Linwood, or Subtle Distinctions, go to subtledistinctions.com. Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more innovator interviews, expert advice, and leadership discussions. If you like this episode, leave a heart, thumbs up, or review, and share it with your colleagues. As an ever-evolving show, we also love feedback, so send us your thoughts or ideas for who we should talk to next to evolve at modernspecies.com. <laughs>